Now, yesterday, former Girls Aloud band member Sarah Harding announced that she's been diagnosed with breast cancer, which has now spread to other parts of her body. She's now one of the 2.5 million people living with cancer in the UK. And experts have warned that coronavirus is having a devastating effect on cancer treatment and that we could be on the cusp of a crisis as more than a quarter of a million cancer referrals were missed at the height of lockdown. One of those who was missed um, and suffering the consequences of delays in treatment is Adrian Rogers. Uh, there's Adrian there with his wife Amanda. Adrian has now been diagnosed with terminal bowel cancer. Adrian and Amanda, thank you for joining us this morning. And um, why do you think, Adrian, that or how do you know that the COVID pandemic has cost you this terrible delay and the spread of your cancer? No, good morning, Eamon. Um, because we was, was planning to have an operation in February, um, and then the surgeon called me and said, would I still go ahead with it due to the COVID-19? I said, I was willing to go ahead with it. So he said, um, I will put it to the, the hospital to see if it would go ahead. Obviously, then got a phone call back saying um, the board of Manchester Royal cast it too risky for me to have the operation due to the COVID. And, and what was that surgery going to be, Adrian? It was going to be a liver resection and a liver repituration because um, the most disease was in my liver, not my bowel. Secondary, it spread obviously to my liver. So it was open to take 50% of my liver away and a little bit of inflammation on the left lobe. And then uh, with lots of doing to the bowel operation um, within a few months. You know. Because you couldn't have that done, um, how worried were you when they told it you that they couldn't go ahead with that? And, and what have the consequences been? What have you been told now? Uh, I've been told uh, I'm not operable again now. So it was either stop treatment and live the rest of my life or carry on the treatment and try this new drug, Avastan, which is administered alongside my chemotherapy. With a, a look at trying to get back to some kind of operation stage or at least prolong my life as long as possible. Um, so the hospital told you, the hospital actually said to you, um, we can't go ahead with your, your surgery uh, because there would be too big a risk of you contracting Coronavirus. That's correct, yes, because we want to be in uh, intensive care after the operation. No, so, no. Really so, so was this was this for your benefit or was this for the professionals who are working in that environment to protect them? Um, I don't quite know. I think it was to protect me, I believe. So I mean if when you look at this situation, basically the choices that you had were proceed and run the risk of picking up coronavirus, delay and continue on other treatment, but the consequence has been you now have terminal cancer. Not much of a choice, is it? No, not really, no. Uh, it was one that we were faced with and uh, we just had to deal with it and fight on. Amanda, a really terrible time for Adrian, for all of you. Um, how are you dealing with this? Because you have to be there for support. We really just take one day at a time and do lots of research, see what's out there, see if there's anything else we can try. Uh, take each day as it comes. And how, do you f how did you feel when, when Adrian was told that his surgery wouldn't be going ahead? Absolutely devastated. It's what we've aimed for for so long with the chemotherapy. And then he finally got to the operational stage and only to be told that it wasn't going ahead because it happened to hit mid-COVID. Look, at, the, at this stage, I'd, I'd like to uh, bring in uh, Professor Carol Sakura, who we've spoken to on the programme before. Um, he's worked in oncology for 50-odd years and a former head of the World Health Organization's cancer programme, and he's led NHS cancer departments as well. Um, Professor, uh, Manchester University NHS Foundation, uh, which was uh, treating Adrian, um, they said, in line with the NHS guidance, we've continued to provide cancer care 
with patients' consent during COVID-19, except when it is considered that the risks of treatment outweigh any benefit to the patient. Um, that is their defence of what, what has happened. What would you say to that I advice? Think, yeah, I feel really sorry for Amanda and Adrian. I mean, it's a, a dreadful situation. And, you know, there are three groups of cancer patients that have suffered this year. First of all, there are people on active treatment, radiotherapy and chemotherapy. And on the whole, they've got through it. And that's not been a problem. Then we've got people like Adrian that knew they had cancer before, uh, the COVID came along, but couldn't do what's necessary. In other words, the surgery to remove the spread of the cancer from the liver. And it's like a little window of opportunity. Hopefully the Avastin, which is the correct drug, will actually control it. And maybe he can go back to surgery. But, you know, it was an opportunity way back in April to deal with that cancer effectively by surgery. And the third group of patients, which is by far the largest, are the people waiting for a diagnostic test, maybe a scan, maybe a biopsy, to show that they have cancer or maybe they don't have cancer. And, you know, in the papers today, it talks about 15 million people on some sort of waiting list somewhere in the NHS. We've got to do something about this. You don't diagnose cancer without having some investigation. Well, well, so N NHS England are saying that cancer services are continuing and, in fact, are rapidly expanding. They are getting better every day. And that's at the end of the people that actually have cancer. What's not so good is the patients at the beginning that don't know they have cancer. They have symptoms, maybe they have a sore throat, a cough, coughing up blood, maybe abdominal pain and so on, and it's progressing, and they need investigation. They need a test, a CT scan, an ultrasound, there's a big waiting list for that. We've got to clear that waiting list and efforts are being made to try and do that. So um, it, it's not all bad news, but people like Adrian have just been caught in this you know, awful period of four months when you know, everything was switched to COVID. And we got over COVID by April. By April the 18th, it was over in terms of capacity of the NHS. And we should have been moving back. And we are, but it's painfully slow compared to other European countries. Yeah, and what about people actually going, um, Professor Sikora, to their GP? I think a lot of people maybe might have found a lump or something unusual that they know is not quite right, but they were too frightened to go to the GP to go outside or sometimes thought that the GP was closed. I know. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you look at some general practices, they look closed, but they, they have made a lot of effort. Uh, now the effort comes from doing phone calls, doing Skype consultations, and all, that's quite right. We've just got to get through it. And there are three players in this whole thing. It's the patient themselves, who many people, especially older people, were scared stiff to go out of the house, far less to the GP or to a hospital. Then there's the GP and the whole referral pattern. Urgent cancer referrals dropped by 43%. Amazing. Um, just like heart attacks dropped by 45%. Uh, how could that be? People are just ignoring it. They're not going to their GP. Then the GPs are difficult to access. And then after that, getting a scan in the hospital is difficult. So the whole yeah. pathway broke down. Doctor, thank you very much indeed for your analysis. Uh, Adrian and Amanda, um, Dr Zakora was talking about how people can get through this and what they should do. Um, how are you two getting through this and... Do you see any future? Um, yeah, I see a future. You've just got to remain positive. If you let it get on top of you, then you start moping about. So you need to remain active and positive if you can. Like and I say, Amanda's been... Yeah, I was going to say, how important is Amanda to that to you? No, she's my rock. She does everything for me. She does all the research, everything that you could possibly think of. Well, we wish you both the very well. Best, um, the very, very best. And our, our thoughts and prayers yeah. are with you both. Thank you. Thank you. Both very much indeed. And good luck to you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much.